Hello everybody. Today we're going to discuss psychology today. And there's a reason God hates the United States. It's not just the 60 million babies we've murdered since 1973. Yeah, it's just it's not just that people who claim to follow Jesus completely reject everything he said about keeping the law. Um, it's not just the million of other things that we do, like pornography and all the other things that we're number one in. It's also psychology today. And now this, this website is ranked around 550 in the United States. That's how popular it is. And this is considered normal in the United States. So next time you wonder why Muslims hate the United States, well, you're about to find out. Uh, which, 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 which one should I start with? Sex with animals? Um, why being a serial killer is okay? Why murder, uh, murder fantasies is fine? <clears throat> uh, why rape fantasies are like almost everyone has them and it's normal? I mean, I mean, we could just, we can go from one to the next to the next. But let's start with just a couple quotes from the psychology of sadomasochism. <clears throat> let's go down. Here we go. Now, this is the sum up, okay? And you guys know what sadomasochism is? Sadomasoch sadomasochism is. But here's the summary, okay? The truth is that each and every one of us harbors sadomaso sadomasochistic tendencies. And that's his sum up. That's all you need to know. Okay. Now let's let's talk about rape fantasies. Now you know liberals are always saying, well, women have to be believed and uh and you have to believe them, and you have to protect a woman from rape. Well, it's not really what they think. I mean, the fact that they're letting across illegal immigrants who have murdered uh, 20,000 people from 1990 to 2010 and have raped 60,000. Now, you may be like, oh, that's not true. That's not true, Mike. Well, it might be true, and... You know, it is true, and I'll show you here, right? I wasn't going to go this way, just to show you how how crazy these people are. Let's go to that. Victims. Okay. And here's the data. You'll find the link in the subscription, in the description. <clears throat> All right, from 1990 to 2010, this is, uh, 90% of these occurred between 1990 and 2010. The link links you to the Government Accounting Office's report from 2011 on uh, alien arrests, uh, the costs, and everything else that has to do with them. Now, you see here, 69,000 sex offenses. 25,000 homicides, 2,000 arsons, and you know, you'd think the liberals would be a little mad here because a lot of these are national forests, but they don't really care because they are consumed by a, a motivation to destroy everything. And you would have to be that way in order to vote for anyone who ignores this. You're talking about women and children being raped and murdered, and it happens every single day, like this kid. That's an unborn baby, like her. So, the atheists, the left, and the false Christians, and really, I should say all Christians are not believers in Jesus Christ because they, they follow Paul. 
But the only people who care about this are a few conservatives and uh, I say a few, a few million and um, and disciples of Jesus. So let's go back to psychology today. All right, so what does uh, Mr. Castleman say here? Well, let's go to the summary. The most sexually and open and self-accepting women had the most rape fantasies. That is his summary. So if you are healthy, if you're sexually open, which means you'll do anything, it's, you know, and that's the good thing for these people. You're, you, nothing is taboo. I mean, you'll you'll rape your child with a dildo. You'll you'll fuck your grandfather. Um, you'll tie your wife up and cut her while you're having sex with her. That, according to these people, and I'm going to show you what they say, that is good. These people are demons, and they should be on death row. God hates these people with a passion. He hates these people. They should be on death row. They should be arrested. They should not exist. In fantasy, everything is permitted and nothing is wrong. This is what they're telling your kids. And your kids are going to become just like them. They're going to become little demons, not literal demons. Demons are spirits. But they're going to become like demons. Everything will be destruction and uh, against the law of God. Here we go. What's this article called? Have you had a homicidal fantasy today? Well. Okay. Indeed, when my college, when my colleague Norbert Schwarz expressed doubts at my assumption that everyone had homicidal fantasies, I thought he was putting me on. This guy thinks everybody has homicidal fantasies, and he provides, in quotes, evidence to support that. And you can find, and you can find a study or a report by a psychologist or in a journal that will justify anything. I mean, anything. I could write a paper on. Um, making a spaceship out of dog shit and flying to the moon, and I could find a journal that says that, that is rational. I bet I could. And that is what these people do. They're demons. God hates them. They shouldn't exist. You may not be surprised at the prevalence of homicidal fantasies in men. The vast majority of guys admitted to at least one but we were surprised at the prevalence in women, a slightly smaller majority, but a majority nevertheless. So not only is it normal to have sadomasochist um, fantasies, and to have fantasies about being raped, which everyone has, right? I mean, this is just super normal. But killing people now is normal. Having sex and killing people is normal that is normal now you know when um ted bundy before he was executed he said that pornography causes people to want to kill now back then pornography was not like it's today it was still um it was still a lot of it all over the place, and it was still awful. Um, but there wasn't the internet. So freaks from one area still felt like freaks because they kept it hidden, and they didn't, they didn't really talk about it with anyone, and no one told them it was healthy. But nowadays, psychology today, these demons that God hates that shouldn't exist, um tell everyone fantasizing about murdering people is fine 
Okay, now let's go on. Serial killers and the essential role of fantasy. I mean, is there a summary quote? No, all of this is shit, so I didn't even do a summary quote. Sex with animals, is it wrong? Here we go. Can animals consent to interspecies sex? I mean, people are actually asking this question. And then not only the answer, they've already answered it, and they're doing it, and they're trying to make it legal. They're trying to make it normal, and they will make it normal eventually, because Christians don't keep the law, they don't care about the law, they don't care what God thinks about the law, or what Jesus said about the law. Uh, they follow Paul, who rejects the law. They follow Acts, which rejects the law, and they, they, they're they totally away from God's will in everything. You can't, you cannot uh, not keep the law and be right with God. You cannot do that. Okay, and you can go to theelect.org and look at um, some articles there, but the, the site is under construction, and there's not a lot up currently, but you can seek around, but you can have a Bible. You know what it says about keeping the law. You know what it says, okay? The only place you find a change is after Luke, and that is exactly where the Bible ends. Everything after Luke is not Scripture. So here we go. It is relatively easy to know from behavior cues, behavioral cues, when an animal does not want to participate, attempts to escape, cries and howls, facial expressions, or pain or distress. But in the absence of overt no behaviors, how do we interpret the animal's willingness or lack thereof? Is silence or absence or refusal to be taken as an, as an indication of consent? What if the animal shows signs of pleasure, interest, willingness? What if people who practice speciality train animals to comply with or participate in sex acts? This is not just an academic question. Much of what transpires in zoo on zooophilia internet chat rooms has to do with what participants seem to think of as gaining consent. On uh, one thread I looked at, called canine anal okay this should be illegal this should be illegal and these people should be on death row okay it is against the law of god it should be illegal all over the world these people should not exist you cannot rape animals and exist in this world you should not exist you should not be able to kill a child and exist you really should not be able to publish articles telling millions of people that uh, having sexual fantasies about murder is okay. You shouldn't be able to do that. You really shouldn't exist if that's how you are and you're influencing the whole world that way. This kind of language is peppered throughout the, the how-tos. Let the animal tell you what he or she wants. Don't force it. Go slowly and get them used to the idea. Train them to like it. This blurring of the line between consent and coercion is, in my opinion, deeply problematic. It's not deeply problematic. It is. It, it, it deserves the death penalty. That's what it deserves. You should be put to death. It's not. And, and people are like, well, don't be judgmental. No. God gave us his judgments. His judgments say these people should be put to death. The fact that Denmark has made bestiality illegal is a step in the right direction. Well, you'd think. <laughs> and let's go on. But we need to start talking more openly about zoophilia. Not to demonize those who practice it. Now, you know what happens when you talk more openly about it? And according to Psychology Today... Uh, where did it say, in fantasy, everything is permitted and nothing is wrong, okay? The most sexually 
open and self-accepting women has the most rape fantasies. So, eventually, what these people are doing, and they start every, every taboo, every most terrible, awful thing that exists, starts with, the idea that you need to talk about it and be more open about it because that will bring understanding and it'll help the people involved and all this shit that's not really what they're doing they've been doing the same thing for hundreds of years they take the most awful thing and they say we should just talk about it a little bit you know just kind of get the idea in everyone's mind okay and we'll add to that idea, you shouldn't judge others. And then eventually, because you shouldn't judge others, it kind of becomes like, well, you know, you do what you want. It's not me. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Well, let's go. <laughs> I mean, man, these people, these fucking people, and the articles they write, why do they exist? Can someone tell me why they are not in a mental hospital? I mean, the only thing we could pray for is that God gives them a heart attack, or they get into a car accident, or something awful happens to them, so their influence no longer exists. Because these are awful people. I mean, I, I don't even know if you call them people. The pedophile and everybody. I mean, I don't even know if I'm going to go down this, but here's a couple things. Acknowledging our own anxieties about these things makes us less rather than more likely to enact them. The more we drive our anxieties underground, pretending to be asexual, the more dangerous we potentially become. Again, what they're doing, again, just like the last one, they're saying, we want you to think about it. If it's if it sounds like a really awful idea and you shouldn't think about it, like like killing people or having sex with animals, well, you're wrong. You should think about it because if you don't think about it, you might become a pedophile. So acknowledging that our own sexualities may not be completely straightforward And not feeling guilty about this. You see, this guy has molested kids. If you read this article, it's clear. And Psychology Today is a platform for the most anti- Yahweh, the most anti-God, the most anti-Torah forces in the world are here. And because Christians don't judge people on God's judgments, because they don't keep the law, almost all the world has become a world of lawlessness. And Jesus talks about um, Lord, Lord, uh, you know, we did this for you, we did that for you. This is in Matthew 7, I think, 21. And Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that practice lawlessness. They called him Lord. They practice lawlessness. He said, I don't even know you. Okay? If you don't keep the law, there's a good chance Jesus doesn't even know you. You can't reject his law and follow Paul. Or, uh, or or whoever wrote Acts, who says you only have to keep three laws. You can't do that and follow what Jesus said in Matthew uh, 5, around 17, Matthew 23, verse 8 to 10, Deuteronomy, everywhere, Exodus, everywhere, the prophets, everywhere. You can't do that. It's impossible. And, you know, most of you are raised in it. So, if you're raised thinking that Paul is 
as God's spokesman, then it's sad. Is the Bible obsolete? Well, you know what he says. All right. <laughs> Was there any more here? Protesting God. Well, yeah, we don't need you. All right. So, everybody, that's it. Hope you enjoy this. These people are awful. They shouldn't exist. I hope you can pray that they die a horrible death in a car accident or something else. Um, and that I would encourage you guys to start practicing the law to do what Jesus and Yahweh say. And, uh, and that's it. If you want to subscribe, that's cool. If you want to like this, that's cool. If you want to share, that's cool. I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.